In this episode of Dejo TV, we'll be talking about X particles and the ray tracing engine in After Effects. You guys heard that? That's my new custom intro score for the Dojo TV composed by the talented Derek Palmer. Now you may have also noticed that I didn't have an intro yet and that's because I'm still working on it. Hopefully that'll come in the next episode, but who knows. But for now, it's gonna be used to preview a lot of pretty things here. But on the reel, those renders were actually created using X particles. Credits to Mike for letting me use those clips into this episode. But basically those clips were created in X particles. And if you guys haven't heard about X particles, um, it's a very, very powerful and very dynamic and customizable and very robust particle system for Cinema 4D. It's been getting a lot of traction recently. Everyone's adopting it. It's very affordable. And I just recently hopped onto the X particle bandwagon and uh, I'm really liking it. You can do some fluid simulations like I did here. You can also generate millions of particles without really a slowdown in the editor or the viewport. So it's really, really cool. It's very robust. Now, if you're familiar with Cinema 4D, then you know that we don't really have that many options. Previously, we had thinking particles, which is kind of sluggish and a little bit complex to use. And you had to use it in conjunction with Expresso to kind of create complex rigs and stuff like that. Um, you have the basic uh, particle emitter in Cinema 4D and you have the MoGraph, which you can kind of create some particle stuff, but nothing as robust as X particles. And you'll see why in a second. X particles is really easy to use. Um, it's very user friendly and it's very similar to how you use MoGraph in Cinema 4D. I also wrote an article about X particles down below at creativedojo.net. So check that out in the article down below or the video description. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into Cinema 4D. I'm gonna show you guys around just a quick tour of X particles and you know the general workflow of X particles. So here we are in Cinema 4D, and to get started with X particles, you need to create some type of emitter. So we can go to the X particles tab and go to emitter, and this will create a general emitter for us. Now, right now our emitter is a rectangle, but we can actually change this to pretty much whatever we want here. Uh, we can change it to a circle, ellipse, sphere, even an object, which means that we can define our model as an object, so our model can actually emit particles or we can select a spline, which can also emit particles as well. So you have a lot of robust options with X particles here as to what an emitter actually is. So I'll just change mine to a circle. So now we have a circle emitter here. And as you can see, we can change the radius. We have a lot of options here, the cone angle, the emitter plane, you know, a lot more options down here. We can also go into the emission tab and this is where a lot of settings are. We can control, you know, the max number of particles, control how long the particles are staying alive, if they are, you know, being emitted at a constant rate or at a pulse or at a trigger event. We can also change the amount of uh, particles or birth rates here. So I'm going to change it to uh, 10,000 here. And as you can see, we have a lot of particles going on. We can actually change this to an even higher value here. And as you can see, we have a lot of particles and as you can see, it still renders just fine. Let's just turn it down a little bit, so maybe around here. You can also change the speed of things as well as the radius and the mass of the particles, as well as add some variation to pretty much all of these properties here. Now working with X particles is very similar to working with MoGraph because things are very, very easy and they're very modular. So for example, we can actually go to the X particles tab here and actually apply a modifier, which is very similar to effectors and such that affect the MoGraph module stuff. So for example, if I just simply add a turbulence, Right off the bat, you can see that we get some nice wavy turbulence. So you can create some pretty interesting smoky, wispy stuff right away very easily. For an example, we can also apply maybe a gravity modifier and that would just pretty much bring our particles down to a fall like this. So as you can see, they're very easy to use and you can just hop into the attribute manager and maybe, uh, you know, tweak some of the settings here. So increase the turbulence scale from five to eight, maybe decrease the frequency to maybe 80%. So it's very, very easy to use and very simple to use. But notice how if I hit the render button, you're not gonna see anything because we actually need to create an X particle emitter to actually see these little individual particles here. So we can go to create shader and create a new X particle material. We can just drag this into the emitter and um, go in here, change the size, maybe like 2% or something like that. And you know, you can change the color, transparency, illumination, more things going on. We can also go to the emitter here and go to the display tab and change how the particles are displayed in the viewport, as well as change some basic colors. Maybe we'll set it to a nice blue color, hit OK. And uh, just like that, we can get some nice blue particles. And uh, let's go and take a quick render here. Hit render, and as you can see, we can see the particles uh, within the uh, renderer here. I'm just gonna delete the materials here. And so right now we just have, uh, let's extend our timeline a little bit. So right now we just have some nice fluctuating uh, particles moving around. As you can see, no slowdown in the viewport. 
So this is really great. And you can do a lot with your particles here. One thing you can do is that you can actually mesh all these particles together to create some solid geometry mesh. And this is very easy to do. Let me just go ahead and lower down the particle count to maybe uh, a thousand. So we'll just resim this really quickly. And uh, so we just have a little bit less particles to work with. And uh, let's go ahead and go to X particles and add a Skinner object. And what this will do is it'll actually mesh all these particles together. So I'm just gonna drag our emitter into the source. And instantly we create some geometry here. So if I render this, you can actually see this within the render. So we can go to the Skinner and you can change the surface to whatever you want. We can change the polygon size to maybe uh, around seven, seven. We can actually go into smoothing, preserve the volume, preserve the geometry, and that will just smooth some of this geometry out a little bit so it looks a little bit more fluid. And just like that, you can create some pretty interesting blobby kind of fluid material going on right here. And this can be liquid, this can be, you know, anything you want actually. And without using real flow, this is pretty interesting. And you can just add a material onto here and, you know, render it normally as if it was just another piece of geometry within uh, Cinema 4D. So that's a Skinner object. You can also do something else. For example, a very popular one is the trail effect here. So add a trail object and you can actually generate some tails. So first we got to actually drag in the emitter to our trail object here. And I will just resend this again. And as you can see, we have some nice, interesting trail effects and you can create some pretty interesting stuff here. You can actually use the hair shader. So for an example, we can go to the create shader and we'll go to uh, the hair material and we'll drag the hair material onto the trail and uh, we'll just go ahead and hit render right around here. And you can see that we can actually see our trails here. You can also change the algorithm of the trail here. So we can go to the trail, we can go from algorithm to no connections to perhaps nearest by distance. And I'll just kind of connect these together, kind of create these nice, interesting connected trails. You can kind of create a plexus look if you think about it very easily uh, with an X particle. So this is very, very cool. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually create some interesting dynamics uh, with X particles. So for an example, if I go into the emitter and I crank up the birth rate a little bit more. And uh, let's go and take a look at this. So something like this, we'll go ahead and just create maybe a cube. You know, we'll place it here. Maybe we'll scale it down uh, 125, 125 by 125. So we just have a nice little cube here and we can actually right click and add a X particles tag, a collider tag and uh, X particles will actually collide against this object. And as we see, they kind of bounce off and kind of warp around it. And this is very, very cool because then, you know, it's very easy to use, very similar to MoGraph and Dynamics once again. And you can easily create collisions within other objects, models, as well as X particle uh, particles themselves. So that's very, very cool. And of course, if you go into the emitter tab, you can see that you can actually do a lot of things here. We have collision controls, so all the complex controls that you would want. For example, the bounce and all that stuff. You also have dynamics here, which allows you to, you know, even run fluid simulations or not, not truly fluid simulations, but get similar dynamics to fluids. You can enable fluids. You can, you know, change around the viscosity, the tension, you can add some foam, uh, you know, a lot of things here. So one last thing to note is that X particles has a ton of control, but one of the great things about X particle is that you have a nice question and answer type of platform. So for an example, if you go into the questions tab here, Things work very, very logically. So for an example, if I just add a question here. So the question can be a lot of things. It can be the particle age, the particle group, the particle count, you know, a whole bunch of things here. But I'm going to stick with uh, the question particle age. So the question is, if the particle age is actually greater than 90 frames, then let's do something. So that's action here. So that's our question. Let's go ahead and add an action. And that action is going to be, let's see here. It can be anything from freeze particle to trigger another event, change the speed. I'm going to go change particle life and I'll just hit direct change. And the action is going to be kill particles. So once again, the question is if the particle age is greater than 90 frames, then we'll kill the particles. And if I just hit play once again, after 90 frames, the particles will start to die as you see here. And if we actually delete the question in the action, you can see that the particles will last a lot longer. So X particles is very, very powerful. There's so much you can do with it and it all integrates very well with Cinema 4D and the existing stuff within Cinema 4D. So check it out, xparticles.com. So that was just a quick tour of X particles and generally how to use it so that you guys can kind of get a basic idea of what X particle is and whether or not you want to purchase it or not. It's very affordable. 
You can read more about X-Particles and all its features over at the X-Particles website. I'll link to that in the article down below. So check that out. Now, if you want to see more tutorials using X particles, Toolform actually did a really, really great extravaganza roundup of all the X particle tutorials around the web right now. So check that out as well. Pretty much everything you need to know about X particles, all the tutorials out on the web right now are actually in that article. So a great roundup. Thank you, Toolform. Now for some interesting news, last week during MoChat, which is kind of like a weekly Twitter conversation with a whole bunch of MoGraph people and stuff like that. Basically, the After Effects team were out there during MoChat and we were talking and a lot of people were just asking questions and such. And so I asked Todd from the Adobe team, uh, what was the future of the Adobe ray tracing engine or the After Effects ray tracing engine? Because, um, you know, it's kind of sluggish. It hasn't been updated in a little while. So, I, you know, I asked him about it. And, you know, he gave us a really surprising answer, which is pretty much basically that it's kind of dead to them. Now, this actually raised a lot of questions. For an example, John from MotionWorks actually did an article about this. So check it out. There's some pretty interesting points in the article as well as in the comments. So definitely check that article out. But it basically talks about how the After Effects team is kind of ending development or cutting or slowing down development for the ray tracing engine and focusing more on Maxon, Cineware and Cinema 4D integration. So basically, they are holding down development for the ray tracing 3D engine for After Effects and focusing all of their time and effort into better integration for Cinema 4D and Cineware for After Effects. Now, Todd actually made it clear that there's nothing wrong with the ray tracing engine and that it still works and that they're still going to maintain it and keep it functional. They're just not going to be adding more to it from here on out until further notice until they find a better replacement for the ray tracing engine. And honestly, I don't really know how I feel about that because I really do love Cinema 4D and I love the Cineware integration. I'm glad that it's there. But the problem is you still have to hop into Cinema 4D. You can't really change anything in After Effects. You have to hop into Cinema 4D and change stuff there and then things will be updated within After Effects. So it's not a really cohesive 3D, uh, you know, workflow here. So I kind of want to be able to create some basic 3D extrusion, 3D text, but then After Effects and just change everything in After Effects without actually leaving the application. A lot of people are also mentioning that it's kind of a bad thing that Adobe is focusing all their 3D efforts into one vendor. For example, in this case, uh, you know, Adobe is focusing on just Maxon Cinema 4D and that everything 3D is going to be related to Maxon. And, you know, a lot of people don't want that. A lot of people say that they want, you know, their own native 3D capabilities within After Effects as well, and not just focus solely on Maxon and 3D from Maxon. So that's also another very interesting point here. So I guess right now Element 3D is going to be the king of After Effects 3D for quite a long time. In other news, Red Giant also updated their Universe plugin, which now includes a total of 59 total effects. Most of them are free. They just added nine new effects into the 1.1 update. So check it out if you haven't already, redgiant.com, where you can actually download it, use a lot of that stuff for free. And if you want to upgrade to the premium package, you can actually do that as well. So check it out, it's free. You know, might as well add some new tools into your arsenal. Check it out, redgiant.com. Link will be in the article down below. Now, recently I've been getting into more of Cinema 4D modeling. Um, you know, before I was more modeling abstract stuff, but now I'm focusing more on modeling realistic items such as things that you would see in real life. So I was actually watching this tutorial by MoGraph Candy teaching me how to model a 3D shopping cart. So that's pretty interesting. Very easy intro tutorial on how to model within Cinema 4D. So check it out. Another tutorial is actually by Tim Clapham over at Hello Lux where he talks about how to create a very interesting, very quickly um, molecule within X particle and Cinema 4D. Now this tutorial is actually very recent, so this is not actually on the tool farm roundup. So check this tutorial out if you have X particles and you wanna learn how to create this. Tim is an excellent instructor, so check him out, hellolux.com. Lastly, if you want something really interesting to watch, check out these semi-permanent titles by MK12. It's a very beautiful and elegant kind of animation here. Um, these are actually really practical shots that they use here, all the chalk explosions that you see right now are actually practical practical effects. They also did a really, really great behind the scenes interview and all that stuff where they talk about how they created the practical effects. They also have videos showing you guys how they kind of created the practical effects, the chalk explosion and stuff like that. It's a very interesting animation and I'm really glad that they have it behind the scenes so that we can kind of see their, their thought process on how to create this. So pretty cool stuff. But that pretty much wraps up this week's Dejo TV episode. I'm really curious about what you guys think about the future of After Effects ray tracing engine as well as your thoughts on X particles. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, all the links in this video will be in the article down below as well as the video description, so check it out. Once again, my name is Vincent Wynn from thecreativedojo.net and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.